With all of the YouTube and Instagram craziness going on around recording studios these days, uh, we're just all getting bombarded with the latest and greatest gear. I do a little bit of that on my channel even because I'm always testing new stuff out, not only for myself, but full transparency for other companies that are sending stuff in. But what are the things that I actually use every single day, every single session? Let's get into this. Hey everyone, I'm Colt Caparoon. Thank you for stopping by for another video. I really just wanted to make this video because I realized the craziness of seeing studios, crazy, crazy studios on Instagram all the time, crazy studios on YouTube all the time. And I, I wanna be realistic with people. I'm very, very fortunate to have the collection of gear that I have. I'm, I've worked very, very hard for what I have. But I think this video is more like a desert island gear list. What are the things that I use every single day on every single song? And, what, and the rest of it is kind of awesome to have and gets used a lot. But, you know, I probably could do without if I had to. So let's jump right into it and take a look at the stuff that I use every single day on every single song. Okay, so let's start with mixing. So first up, these right here are the Cappy Hiders, the new versions, the H2s. I would say of all the gear in this room, those probably get used the most. They live on my mix bus for every single mix. I track 99% of vocals through them. I track about half my guitars through them. They are absolutely stunning. Next after that, the Serpent SB4001. Uh, I think I have a whole video on this, but this has also been on my mix bus for many, many years now. So the mix bus hits the Cappy Hiders and then goes immediately into the Serpent. And then immediately following the Serpent goes to the SPL Big. Now I've been using this on every single mix since I got it, maybe six or eight months ago now. No, coming up on a year ago now. I can't say enough good things about this. I have a whole video on it, I'll link it down below. Now that mix bus chain gets used on 100% of the music that I work on, regardless of the genre, or whether I produced it, or whether I'm being sent some from other producers to mix. This mix bus chain is on every single song, no matter what. Now obviously there's a bunch of gear here that gets used often, but we're just talking about the stuff that gets used the most. The next one would be the TubeTech LCA-2B. Uh, this might have to be my Desert Island compressor. I mean, it, it just is my favorite compressor hands down for literally anything. It lived on my drum bus for a very, very long time, for 12 years or so on my parallel drum bus, and I have tracked every single vocal through it since I got it, 12, probably 12 years ago now. It's an absolute secret weapon, not cheap, but a very cool secret weapon. Now, funny short story about this compressor. I actually bought this used about 12 years ago, and uh, when it showed up, the return address said Frank Filippetti on it. And I was like, oh, Frank Filippetti, you gotta be kidding me. So I looked him up on Facebook and I sent him a message. I was like, hey, Frank, I just bought your compressor. Uh, just wanted to reach out and say thanks and looking forward to putting it to good use. And he replied almost immediately and was like, hey, Cole, I'm glad it went to a good home, you know, <laughs> like he had any idea as an actual nobody. And uh, but I replied and I was like, hey, is there any chance you could tell me like what you used it on? Like what what albums did you use it on? Like what was your use case for it? And he's like, oh, yeah. He said uh, that was on my mix bus for years. And with this compressor uh, on my mix bus, I did Elton John and Barbara Streisand and James Taylor, and he just gave me like this laundry list of records that this exact compressor was on the mix bus for. So I'm not too superstitious, but I think it has a little bit of mojo in it, and it's one of my Desert Island pieces that will never, ever go anywhere. Not a cheap compressor, but I'll put a link below so you guys can go check it out. Next up would have to be the Audioscape 260VU. This is a fairly new addition for me, but um, it has been on my parallel drum bus for every single song since the moment I got it. It just is awesome. It has so much attitude, so much aggression, so much smack. Uh, I do have a full video on that, so I'll link it down below along with a link to this compressor. So the next runners up for compression would have to be a tie between the Distressor and the 1176. 
Uh, they're obviously both incredible and I use them all the time. Usually on vocals, sometimes on bass guitar, sometimes on snare. Just kind of depends on on what we're what we're working with here. Now I want to mention real quick that the Tube Tech compressor uh, I use on every single vocal that I record. However, if I'm mixing something that I've tracked, uh, I won't use the same compressor again. I'll use something else, whether it's the Distressor or 1176, or on the most recent song, the the Rupert Neve Newton channel. I will kind of mix it up, but. That kind of changes on a song by song basis. And if I'm being sent a song to mix from another producer, just about 100% of the time that vocal is going through the tube tech because I didn't track it, it didn't already go through the tube tech. So that tube tech hits every vocal that leaves this room, no matter what. Just kind of depends on, on what the scenario is and whether I'm mixing something I've tracked or whether I'm mixing something for someone else. The Audioscape XL305 Reverb, another mainstay. This reverb is it has 12 springs in it, all analog, sounds absolutely incredible. Uh, I have a whole video on this as well. I'll put the link down below. Obviously monitors, these get used in every single song. So Focal Trio 11BE. I'm still so, so pumped on these. And I actually have a third one getting ready to go in the center for when I do my conversion to Atmos, but they're just, they're incredible. I have a whole video on them. And the Oratone 5Cs, best thing ever for checking your mixes. Like I use these on every single song. And uh, over in the corner, the Focal Sub 12, which is just a banger of a sub. Let's move on to microphones. So uh, here on the stand is the Lauren Audio Atlantis. This has been a surprise to me because it has made it on, I don't know, 80% of the vocals that I've tracked since it showed up. It wins just all the time on everything. Under $2,000, definitely not anywhere close to the most expensive mic I own, but really cool options. This switch right on the back here, this uh, forward, neutral, and gentle switch is, is the magic. It's the magic. I can't, I probably need to do a whole video on this because I can't say enough good things about it, honestly. And when this microphone doesn't win, most of the time, it's this one, the Lauren Audio Eden. Uh, this is definitely a pricier microphone, but it sounds so, so good. I love it on so many different singers. Definitely more colorful, definitely, you know, just a bigger tube microphone sound, but it's awesome. So I'll put a link down below for both of those. Oh, and the other microphone. Another microphone honorable mention is the Neumann U87. Uh, I've actually, been using this a fair amount lately. I'm pretty impressed by it. Uh, I've used the vintage ones a bunch before I had this, but this one's been getting some use as well. Um, so I, I definitely wanted to include it in this list. While we're in here, Focal Solo 6BE. I'm really impressed with these. Been doing almost all my editing in here just because it's a different room and a different vibe. And everything I do in here goes through the Avid uh, Inbox Studio, which again, super flexible. Probably a full video on that coming soon, but really really enjoying this setup now headphones while we're tracking vocals uh, it's usually one of these two the uh, biodynamic dt770 pros uh, the singers are usually wearing one of these two microphones those are audio technica m50s and between these two headphones the singers are almost always wearing one of these now for mixing i'm just uh, still 100 percent sold on these Focal Clear MG Pros. Uh, I have a whole video on these. I'll link it down below as well. But they're just the most unreal headphones I've ever used. But then since these are open back when I'm tracking, I use these, uh, I've been using these lately. These are the Biodynamic uh, DT700 Pro Xs. Really impressed with these for like tracking and really for mixing as well. But I like them a lot for tracking. So I've been using these a whole bunch lately and they've been serving me really, really well. The Moog Subsequent 37. I cannot say enough good things about this synthesizer. Like my gosh, is it incredible. I use it for just about all my keys, all my synthesizer stuff on every song. It is so so good, it, it ends up on every single song I work on. The Fender 64 Custom Hand-Wired Deluxe Reverb. I just did a whole video on this with uh, with Tyler Bryant. If you wanna go hear tons of examples, I'll link that video down below. Just unreal, unreal tones, unreal amp. 
Uh, this is definitely my most used amp that, that I have at the moment right now. And most of the time when I'm recording any guitar amps, it's going through this uh, Boss Waza Tube Amp Expander. And I have a whole video just on this. I'll link it down below. And these brand new, no video on these yet, but it's coming. The Rupert Neve Design Newton Channel. Uh, this is kind of an honorable mention because these are too new for me to say that, that they're on every single song. But my gosh, uh, this channel strip just won the overall vocal channel strip shootout on a song that I just finished mixing yesterday. And uh, I can't say enough good things about it. these. These sound really good. So stay tuned for the video on that. Let me know if you guys want a video on the new Heritage Audio as well. I guess the video would not be complete without talking about the Grace M905 Studio Controller, the monitor controller. Um, this thing is this thing is pretty incredible. Like it does absolutely everything. It's so easy to use. It's seamless. It sounds incredible, honestly. Like switching to this monitor controller. It was a big, big difference for me. But the functionality is insane. I, uh, I obviously am not gonna go through its whole functionality in this video. Uh, the rack mount portion is over here with a separate headphone output and all the connections on the back of it. Really, really good monitor controller. I can't, I cannot recommend that enough. I should have also mentioned that I'm using the Apollo 16 Mark II, the Blackface one. I've been running this interface for a really, really long time, and obviously everything that I do goes through that interface. For now, that's changing very, very, very soon. There'll be a whole video series about that. But these Apollos have, have served me really well for a really long time. I'll put a link to those down below along with everything else, and those links go to Sweetwater. Sweetwater is sponsoring this video. You can get just about anything you need from Sweetwater and just about everything that I've shown you in this video you can get from Sweetwater and I'll put all of those links down below so you can go out and check out prices or anything else and if you use any of those links anytime you need any musical gear not just the things listed you hop on any video click on any link buy anything you need and it really goes a long ways to help support this channel and help me keep continue making videos like this why can't I I'm gonna have to rehearse this I can't ever get this out anymore in every video I screw it up Probably the thing that I touch the absolute most is the Stealth Egro Lab. This is a this is a high-end chair. This is the chair that I sit in all day every day. But my gosh, is it incredible the way the adjustments work and literally every single thing is adjustable on it. Comes with uh, two pistons like the actual piston there so you can do a high and a low one. Comes with multiple sets of wheels, large and small. Um, and it's just is perfect. It's the perfect studio chair. Uh, I cannot say enough good things about it. So go check that out. Link in description below. Okay, let's start with acoustic guitar. This is hands down my number one. This is my Gibson Songwriter Standard Rosewood. Uh, I do have a whole video on this when I was picking it out. It's stunning. Can't say enough good things about it. It sounds so, so good. And then for electric guitars, it's kind of a toss up between uh, my Sur Telecaster here uh, and some PRS stuff and my Iconic Guitars Telecaster here. I have featured this in a video before. Uh, this PRS hollow body SE is really, really, really good as well. I hope that was a cool look behind the scenes. Regardless of how much gear you see in someone's studio, regardless of what crazy collection they may have or how insane their studio looks, most of us are using most of the same stuff all the time and the rest of it gets sprinkled in. And that's really where we start investing our money is once we have our core things that we have that we use all the time on every single session, then as we save and we prepare, then we might need a little extra spice for this other thing, you know? Like, like I've got these AML compressors here and they go on acoustic guitar sometimes, but I, I could do without them, but they do sound better than some plugins that I have. So like, you know, eventually you just keep adding and you keep building so that way no matter what the song is, no matter what the song calls for, no matter what genre it is, you have the best tools in your rig to get the maximum results out of that song and those particular tracks. And that's really what this is all about. The versatility to crush every single mix no matter what. Thank you guys so much for watching. 
Don't forget to subscribe. Smash that like button. I haven't said that in a while. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. Also, if you want to hear any of this gear, there's a playlist down below uh, of songs that I've worked on. And you can hear all of this gear because I've been using it all for quite a while now. So thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.